Can the Biden administration come up with a defense and foreign policy strategy that meets our real needs before it's too late? Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. While the focus is on rising prices and the latest COVID-19 variant, a mortal crisis is brewing internationally. For the first time since the Cold War, we are faced with powerful adversaries who are determined to fundamentally alter the global status quo and have the means to seriously challenge the U.S. On a per capita basis, Russia is an economic cipher. Nonetheless, it has substantially increased its military power. Putin has two main goals. One is to reestablish political and economic control over the countries that broke away from the old Soviet Union in the early 1990s. Putin is appalled that Ukraine, the country he prizes most, has been strengthening ties with the West, despite Russia's seizure of Crimea in 2014 and Russia fomenting separatist forces in eastern Ukraine. He wants to make Ukraine a Kremlin puppet, if not again a formal part of Russia. Clearly, the Biden administration was caught off guard by Putin's placing a ready-to-invade army on Ukraine's border. After our self-inflicted disaster in Afghanistan, Putin puts little credence in our warnings. China strongman Xi Jinping believes retaking Taiwan will be the core of his historic legacy. He is set not only on driving out the U.S. as a military and political power in Asia, but also having Beijing replace Washington as the dominant power as well. Iran's mullahs are now on a fast track to develop both nuclear weapons and the missiles to deliver them, enabling Tehran to control the oil-rich Middle East and, as fantastic as it sounds, annihilate Israel. Clearly, the floundering, incoherent approach Biden has taken to these challenges must change. This means formulating a coherent strategy that would echo our approach after World War II and faced with an expansion-minded Soviet Union, containment. Containment meant thwarting Soviet ambitions, particularly against Western Europe. With Soviet communism held in check, the idea was that its economy would eventually implode, which it did. Today, we must once again let the world know we are ready to keep the bad guys at bay, including providing necessary armaments to Ukraine and Taiwan. We must not let Putin emasculate NATO, which will necessitate a permanent and substantial military presence in Poland and the Baltic states of Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. It would also mean a substantial commitment to building up the necessary military assets, including credible cyber capabilities and countering Russia and Chinese moves in space. And finally, it means addressing the American people on these new and disturbing geopolitical realities. Of course, a vibrant American economy is a necessity, which will take place when this administration is thrashed in upcoming elections and pro-growth policies are put in place. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions, and I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh.